And let's move on. The market is having a very Merry Christmas, it seems. Look at that. 125 points higher, not giving up on any of its gains. A big winner of 2023 is Densar Technologies. And uh, the stock has seen a stellar move, 182% move this year. In all the stock of generative AI, Zensar Technologies is also doing a lot in this space. So let's get straight to that. Manish Tandon, the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer at Zensar Technologies, joins us now uh, to talk about that. Manish, thanks a lot for joining in. Uh, you have done 100 proof of concepts for clients on generative AI. You know, we were just having this conversation with Happiest Minds yesterday and they told us that 20% of their revenue can come from generative AI products and systems in the next five years. Uh, what is your own uh, opportunity here? And, uh, you know, what kind of trajectory are you looking at? I think it will depend on, see, we are in the services sector. Uh, we are... Uh, it will depend to a large extent on the acceptability of generative AI uh, in the larger market, in the domains that it is successful. Um, and I would say 20% uh, is a good estimate um, overall if the market, if the technology really takes off. Uh, although I can tell you a word of caution, it's still early days for the technology. Okay. All right. Uh, well, one of the things which have really stood out for your stock, which has in fact risen around 180% this year or so, congratulations on that. But nonetheless, in terms of your margin improvement from Q2 of FY23, 8.5% to all the way to 18.6% in the quarter gone by, uh, what can you guide on in terms of margin, say, for the second half of the fiscal? What would the exit run rate be and what is sustainable? I think, uh, uh, first of all, we don't provide guidance, uh, but our goal is to maintain mid-teen margins. Um, currently, we are running a bit higher than that, and uh, that gives us the flexibility to invest in the business, invest in our employees, and invest in our clients, invest in sales, invest in getting large deals. So, uh, we, we are looking at uh, maintaining uh, margins in a narrow band of mid-teens. All right. Um, is there any uh, aspiration that you have as far as revenues are concerned? I mean, you know, you're doing about $600 million annually. Um, the $1 billion mark is something that every company looks at. Uh, do you have a sense of uh, when you want to get there by? And uh, how has demand generally been in the near term for you to be able to get to that $1 billion mark in the medium and long term? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I'm just glad you're not on my board uh, because... Uh, then I keep getting asked this billion dollar question. And uh, I can say that uh, as a company and as a CEO, I'm focused more on profitability of the company. Ultimately, all the valuation models uh, that you see out there, they are not dependent on revenue growth. They are, reven uh, they are dependent on EPS uh, growth or cash flow growth. And that's what we are uh, focused on. Uh, so even in this environment, uh, if you notice, our uh, bottom line uh, PAT has gone up by close to 60, 66%, if I'm not mm. mistaken. And that is what uh, we will continue uh, to strive to deliver value to investors. Uh, see, it's easy to get revenues with zero profitability. I mean, mm. you can just do a lot of pass-through revenues and get to a billion dollars. But again, it's meaningless. Uh, it's about how you get to that. What is the profitability that you generate is 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 extremely important. Mm. Uh, it's interesting you say that because you know um, if you map what's happened in the last couple of quarters, right? The industry has not signed any large deals, especially in Q3. Uh, do you think that is just lumpiness, or uh, is that something that can continue? I ask also because Accenture, in their uh, latest release, spoke about muted demand environment. They spoke about um, the, the, the deal wins not being as strong as what, is, at what it was before. Uh, your own thoughts on mega deals? See, mega deals and large deals, actually deals are happening. But every for every one or two deals that happen, equal, number get, uh, equal numbers get cancelled also. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. I would say... Uh, uh, I would say that uh, the market continues to remain very tough, and uh, there is a uh, there is a disconnect between um, what is what you see in the stock markets and what you see in the real economy. 
Uh, I know stock markets are supposed to be looking at the future, so hopefully the future is bright. Uh, but I can tell you that here and now, uh, the demand environment is pretty tough. Uh, we have a lot of exposure to high tech. And I can tell you that at least this quarter, uh, the furloughs are deeper and broader than what I have seen in the past. Okay. But uh, Manish, do you expect this to change considering that, you know, IT companies have seen cy different cycles? And next year, we're expecting the Fed to probably cut rates. So that should probably fuel a softer demand or better demand environment, rather. Uh, in that case, uh, what is your outlook when it comes to demand, discretionary spend, decision making going into next year? See, my, uh, from my, my perspective, it is not just about interest rates. It's also about uh, the excess liquidity in the system. Today, um, uh, as you know, the Fed balance sheet uh, is still at least twice the size it was uh, before uh, COVID. And uh, I think that is also causing uh, some of this asset uh, bubbles, uh, which are yet to be pierced. Uh, from an industry perspective, yes, if interest rates come down, then we will see more capital investments and uh, more discretionary projects. Uh, will come into play. But uh, again, remember that interest rates will come down if the economy doesn't do well. So that also one needs to bear in mind. Um, sometimes, uh, I mean, you get what you ask for, uh, right? right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that is something that uh, that one needs to one needs to look at. All right, take that point. Thank you so much, Manish, for joining in. And, uh, you know, you've had a Midas touch on the stock ever since you've uh, joined the company, the business, the stock price, margins have reached to mid-teens, etc. You expect it to stay there. And then the next time we meet, we'll again ask you that billion-dollar question as well.